How's it going? All right. I know this is a lot of just people talking at you for a long period of time, so I wanted to start out something a little fun, get the energy going. Does that sound good? All right. Thanks to this guy. That's awesome. All right. So when I say hey, you say ho. Hey. Ho. Hey. Ho. When I say B2B, you say marketing. B2B. Marketing. B2B. Marketing. When I say, hey, you say, I can't wait to learn how to create a sustainable demand gen funnel that grows over the next five years by focusing on tactics traditionally considered to be upper funnel that will actually have a much bigger impact on the bottom of my funnel. Hey! <laughs> Fun every time. So I am John Zucker. I'm the Senior Product Marketing Manager at Mountain. Um, I am not in sales, I'm in marketing. I have a great reverence for sales, I will just say that. Both my parents are in B2B sales, they're very tired. Um, but I do come today as a marketer, uh, and I really like what I do because I get to spend a lot of my time talking to other marketers about what's working for them, what they're doing, how they're being successful. I also get to talk to them about what's not working, what are their pain points, and what are some problems that we need to solve. And so one of the things that I've heard time and time again is that the traditional B2B marketing playbook just isn't working the way that it used to. Whether it's the perfect storm of iOS updates, rising cost of CPCs, or just the general crowding of the B2B space, the tactics that people are used to using are just showing some diminishing returns. Marketers need new tools, and more importantly, they need a new way of thinking in order to build a sustainable demand gen funnel for years to come. And so, Today, I'm going to be talking about that new playbook, specifically how connected TV can really be that engine that helps fuel your full funnel tactics, your full funnel strategy, and help you build a sustainable demand gen engine that works for the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. <laughs> All right, just checking to see if you're, uh, you're listening. All right, so here's what I'm going to talk about today, specifically how CTV helps B2B marketers reach the full funnel and how you can use a full playbook uh, to achieve that. The second is I'll walk through a case study of a mountain advertiser who took a chance on CTV and saw it pay off even during an uncertain time. And finally, I'll talk about some additional benefits that CTV can offer your business. So I want to start out with just one thing that I think most of us feel, and that is that B2B marketing is really, really hard. Sarah, do you agree with that? All right. Thank you for your participation. He agreed, if everybody saw. Um, the Harvard Business Review published a stat that 90% of B2B decision makers purchase from companies they knew at the start of their buying process. On top of that, the B2B Institute showed that those same decision makers are only, only 5% of them are ready to purchase at any given time. So that means 95% of your potential buyers are not searching for you on Google. They're not searching for your competitors. And when they are, if that's how they're finding you, you have less than a 10% shot of closing that deal. Once again, say with me, B2B marketing, really hard. B2B marketing is really hard. This is going to be participatory because the rest of them won't be. So what we need to do is, as a marketer, is you need to make sure you get in front of your potential clients. You need to show them who you are, have them visit your site before they even know that they're a buyer and they need to be interested in that. You basically need to incept it into their heads like a young Leonardo DiCaprio, but better looking. Nothing? OK. They don't all work. <laughs> because B2B marketers are traditionally very good looking people. And so you really need to use different tools. Unfortunately, the traditional tools just aren't cutting it. Like I said, paid search doesn't generate new demand. 95% of your total addressable market is not searching for you. Paid social is great, but as B2B marketers, we know it's not really made for us, and LinkedIn alone is just not enough. And while events like this are a lot of fun, we're having fun, they're not evergreen. And you need an evergreen tactic to build a sustainable demand gen engine. So that's why you need to switch things up. So that's why we're ditching the old playbook and we're bringing in a new one. And so what marketers are doing is they're leaving just the traditional, only lower funnel tactics, and they're actually taking a more full funnel approach. So you need to look up the funnel to support down the funnel. 
And that's where CTV comes into play. CTV really has become a marketing channel that B2B marketers can use to be effective to fuel that demand gen engine. With uh, CTV, you could target your specific buyer by title, by role type, by uh, their past purchasing of different software, their intent, and more. You can target your CRM lists, and then you can reach buyers when they're leaned in, when they're watching Peacock, ESPN, NBC, and more. On top of that, you can deliver qualified site traffic, get people interested before they become buyers, secure that place in that initial consideration set. That way, you have an actual shot of closing that deal later. So let's talk about a, a, a company that's done this right. It took a chance on CTV, even during an uncertain time, and found some success. So Pluralsight, they're an enterprise-grade B2B company. They have 1,700-plus employees. They create courses, custom learning paths, and certifications for tech professionals. When their senior director of global demand gen, uh, Koji Takagi, joined the company, he was given a pretty tall order. He had to grow their inbound leads even though they had a very high benchmark, and he came in during a pretty uncertain economic time. That's not easy. Uh, on top of that, he inherited the classic demand gen playbook that was squeezing the bottom of the funnel drier and drier by the day. So he came to Mountain because he thought that CTV could be a play to get some fresh new contacts and fuel his funnel. So he knew that they needed to invest to grow. Um, it's a pretty bold move to come to a new company in an uncertain economic time and say, we need to spend money on the upper funnel. It's a tough conversation with finance. I think hopefully some of you have already had it. But he knew that the only way to grow that bottom of the funnel was to look up, to get in front of his buyers before they were buyers and prime them to make sure he was in that consideration set so that they would become leads later. He took a different approach. And when I asked him, why did you take this approach? You know, you're pretty new on the job. Uh, he actually said something that was far too profound for something off the cuff, but he's a pretty eloquent guy. He said, as B2B marketers, we have to think differently than other stakeholders at the company. BDRs and SDRs think in terms of months. AEs, quarters, maybe their year. As a B2B marketer, we need to think in terms of decades. If we don't make the right investments now, our pipeline is going to be uh, a lot worse next year, in the year to come, in the year to come. And so that's why he felt confident in taking this risk. So more specifically, what did he do on Connected TV, specifically with Mountain, uh, which we optimized towards driving site traffic and actual demos with TV? He did two tactics. One is he did prospecting. So exactly what I talked about before, he built his exact buyer profile and targeted them on Connected TV with the goal of driving them to uh, the Plural Site website to learn more. Um, what was really cool is something that we've seen on average, people who watch a CTV ad and then visit the site actually stay on the site longer than people who visit by way of other channels. So on average, people who watch CTV go to the site, they actually st spend more time on the site, 57% to be exact, than people who came by way of paid social. Um, even more interesting, they actually spend 21% more time on the site than people who came from paid search. So you're getting people who are actually learning who you are from the get-go. Another thing that Pluralsight did is they retargeted those same people who visited the site to keep those leads warm and make sure that by the time they were ready to buy, those 5% of people actually converted into inbound leads, trials, and eventually closed one business. They also opted to use one of our totally optional units. Uh, it's multi-touch. It allows you to extend the messaging of your connected TV to other devices in the household. Again, to just drive more people down their funnel. And it worked. I wouldn't be here if it didn't, but it did, and that's uh, exciting for all of us involved. So even though they had a really high benchmark, they were able to grow their inbound leads by 15%. That's really hard at the scale of the company that they were at, especially during the time that they did it. They beat their specific metric goals, but most importantly, by looking up the funnel, they were actually able to improve their spend to pipeline efficiency by 70%. So that just means that their specific impact on the company's bottom line became a lot more valuable. Marketing became more valuable at Pluralsight. I think we can all agree, if we're more valuable, that's good for us and it's good for our business. So beyond Pluralsight, I'm going to talk about a couple other trends that I think are pretty interesting in the business. The other is a halo effect. So 
what we found is that people who add connected TV to their campaigns see an immediate halo effect on their other channels. So specifically, B2B marketers see that their conversion rates for paid search improve on average by 22%, paid social by 9%, and email marketing by 37%. And this makes a lot of sense. Those channels are not built to do heavy lifting. TV is. You have a 15-second, 30-second, non-skippable ad that you're reaching your buyer. They're already going to know who you are. That way, by the time that they actually engage with these other channels, all they have to do is close that business. Basically, CTV is the point guard that's tossing up the alley-oop to these other channels who are now looking great on the highlight reel. We also use connected TV for our own business. I'm here as a B2B marketer. We're a, a B2B business. And one thing that has been really interesting is back in the day, we had a different business model. We switched. We built a platform entirely from the ground up to transform T CTV into a performance marketing channel. And when we started using our own platform, we saw our close one rates accelerate. But even more important is we saw our sales cycle speed up by 31%. When our buyers are primed with a full message, they know who we are, and they, it makes that first conversation a lot easier to have. It also makes the second conversation easier to have, and it leads to that closed one business a whole lot faster. So to address one elephant in the room, TV Creative has been a barrier to entry for a lot of B2B marketers. Um, that's understandable. The old model of the way that you built TV Creative could be really expensive, and it would make it tough to want to take this type of a, a new approach. Fortunately, there are some new innovations in the space that do make TV Creative pretty affordable. Uh, the first is called Creative as a Subscription. This is a mountain-specific offering. We provide you with fresh creative every quarter um, at no additional cost beyond what you spend in media. That way, you can just focus all of your budget on actually delivering ads to the right buyers at the right time to drive them to visit your site. Uh, the second is QuickFrame. QuickFrame is a leading marketplace that has world-class creators that all specialize in creating fast, affordable, high-quality creatives. So that's something that you can access right now if you want to get on the platform quickly. And the final one is Viva. We just announced this at Con. It's still in development. Um, but this is going to be a tool that allows any marketer with a vision to be able to create their own ad using generative AI, their own assets, and uh, stock footage. Be able to remix that ad and then also continue to edit it directly in the application. Uh, we'll keep you posted as we keep working on that more. So to wrap things up, keep it easy, breezy, beautiful, cover girl, fun. Um, these are today's key, key takeaways. Um, B2B advertisers really need to be in the initial consideration set. And to do that, you need to switch up the approach from what the traditional tactics are. CTV allows B2B marketers to really take that full funnel approach and get people primed to actually get an opportunity to win their business later. Adding CTV to a marketing plan doesn't just work on its own as a channel. It also makes your other channels more effective. It makes your sales cycle a lot easier, and it'll help grow your business. And finally, creative doesn't have to break the bank anymore. There are new ways to do it that makes it a lot easier to get on CTV and lowers the barrier to entry.